Hello my fellow weirdos, my name is Marie McWilliams and welcome back to my channel. For today's video we are going to be doing a review of The Fearing... Is Quadrilogy a thing? The Fearing series, all four parts. As I said, we are doing a review of The Fearing by John F. D. Taff. This is an apocalyptic horror in four parts. Book one is Fire and Rain. Book two is Water and Wind. Book three is Air and Dust. And the finale, book four, is Earth and Ember. And I don't know how to start this without saying I absolutely loved this series. Essentially what it is about is the end of the world, except it's not really your usual end of the world situation. It's every end of the world situation simultaneously. Let me explain. So, the <laughs> I'm gonna get all serious here. If you're familiar with Carl Jung, he is a psychoanalyst um, and is he Austrian? I don't know, from back in the day, but he came up with the theory of collective unconscious. Basically the idea that all of our fears and our loves and everything like that all end up coming together in this big collective unconscious. And if you imagine like a big massive bowl filling up as society has evolved right back from cavemen till today. The problem with that is that the vessel containing our fear is now full. Our fear started off quite basic when we were cavemen. It was about not being prey, essentially, not freezing to death, not starving to death. Those were our fears. But as we have evolved, our fears have become more complex, more sort of um, existential, and the bowl has reached breaking point. If it doesn't empty to allow it to refill again, what will happen is the mechanism with which our collective unconscious feeds into it, i.e. the world, is going to be destroyed forever. So, all of humanity's fears that have ever existed from the beginning of time are suddenly dumped simultaneously on the earth, all in one go. Killing pretty much everybody. Intrigued? Yeah. It's so good, isn't it? It's a good premise. So it starts off with a kind of like wider fear. So you've got things that millions of people would share collectively as a fear in common, such as tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, um, volcanoes, nuclear war, that kind of thing. Things that we're all collectively worried about. And that wipes out the vast majority of the world's population. What's left, then you are getting individuals facing their specific fears to them and to the last few survivors around them. So that's when you get down into things like cannibals, killer clowns, the Ku Klux Klan, spiders, bats, all sorts of stuff. And essentially it is about the last groups of survivors trying to not get killed by their fears and the fears of others, whilst all simultaneously outrunning the darkness which is slowly swallowing the earth whole, as I said, if this vessel isn't sort of reset to allow it to begin drip feeding fears and again the world is just going to disappear and everything's going to cease to exist. So the characters that we have are sort of ragtag bunch of survivors. We have an RV full of um, elderly tourists <laughs> who somehow survived. We have a group of high school students. We have a preacher. And we also have two characters who know and understand better what's going on because they are a part of it. You have Adam, who is sort of a representative of fear and he's enjoying what's happening and he wants the world to end because he feels the fears of the world. So every time a fear is enacted, it kind of like relieves him of all of that burden and he feels lighter and better. So if you can get rid of humanity altogether, there will be no fear anymore. His mother, um, who is Monday in the book, she is trying to stop the end of the world, um, but understands that in order for the earth to reset, for the world to continue on, for humanity to continue on, we're gonna have to have this cleanse, essentially. So they are coming together and the survivors are all coming along with them and we're coming to this meeting point for this big finale. What do I think of the book? Well, I loved it. The premise is absolutely fantastic and if it's not made into a Netflix original series, I will be genuinely gutted because it would make a really badass one. 
I think that the characters were all incredibly well written and relatable. You're dealing with quite a massive and vast topic here. You've got a lot of people to try to kind of juggle amongst your characters and it would be very easy to get lost in that for characters to just sort of slip into the background to become two-dimensional but Taff is really really good at giving each character their own moments, their own emotional crises and issues and dealing with their own individual fears without it overshadowing anybody else um, or the overall theme. Um, I love the theme, the, the kind of underlying theme of it, which is the idea that um, our anxiety is crippling us individually and as, as a society we've become fearful not just of like actual threats but also potential and unrealized threats and I can relate to that very well because I have generalized anxiety disorder and I understand what it's like to have that kind of flight and fight or flight response when there isn't actually a threat so I find that particularly interesting. I thought it was one of those types of books that like grips you from literally the first page and will not let you go until the end. I mean Every time I read about it, I just wanted to find out what happened, who survived, who lived, what happens at the end, what is this all about? I just loved, it was a constant, constant action, constant pace, gathering, gathering, gathering until this big climax, which was well worth at the end as well, total payoff. I hate sometimes when things are a bit bleh, anti climactic at the end, but this was really good. I gave it four and a half out of five. I marked it down for two reasons, and I'm being a little bit petty, but first of all, I would have preferred to have this as a single book rather than four separate parts personally. John, the author, explains at the end of the final book why he did it the way that he did it and he said that this is basically his kind of um, big vast novel um, and when he thought back to all those kind of big epic novels from when he was a kid, for example like Lord of the Rings, they were in parts and he kind of wanted to do that to sort of create that tension and that pace and that need in the audience to find out what happens next and that worked but I would have really loved to have the opportunity to just sit down and binge all four. The other reason is because again I'm being kind of petty but it essentially boils down to the fact that if you don't live in the sort of middle section of America well you're never gonna make it you're gonna die because the way that it's kind of working is that the darkness is sort of spreading inwards all the way around the globe simultaneously and then it's to this meeting point between Adam and Monday when they're going to kind of battle it out for humanity's survival and that's this little point in the middle of America. So if you were here in Europe and managed to survive or in India or whatever um, and you managed to survive the nuclear holocaust or whatever the hell happened in your country and then you managed to face your individual fears and survive, unless you had a boat with a hell of a lot of go bar and petrol, there's no way you're going to make it all the way to America to outrun that darkness and get there. So the only survivors in the world are based in America. And I kind of got that thing where I don't know if anybody else feels like this, but does anyone else who's not from America, whenever they're watching like big, like apocalyptic movies or science fiction movies, always get a little bit like, why does everything happen in America? Like aliens only ever land in America. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, ugh. There's other countries. So I don't know, I kind of like read it from a personal perspective and was like, oh, there's no way I was gonna make it. Um, as if this could really happen. But I think that's a testament to his writing as well. I think if my complaints boil down to the fact that I couldn't read it all at once and I really wanted to. And um, when I was imagining it happening to me, I didn't think I'd be able to survive. <laughs> it sounds like John has done a really great job with the series as a whole. So yes, I will put a link down below to his website and to Grey Matter Press, which is the company that publishes them. Thank you to both of them for sending them to me um, to read and review. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so immediately. If you're a fan of horror, if you're a fan of apocalyptic stuff, if you're a fan of thrillers, read these. Have you read them yourself? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you get a notification every time I post new content. But for now, that's me. Bye. <laughs>